Good day, everyone, and welcome back to TMAC FPV, your home for your journey to better FPV fun flights and racing stuff. Today, we're going to compare the performance on these four video transmitter or VTX antenna to find out if one outperforms all the others and which one may be the best for your FPV flying experience. Let's do this. Before we get into the flight videos comparing the four different antenna, we wanted to take a look at the manufacturer specifications for each of these uh, four different antenna. To begin with, three of the four antenna that we're comparing are circularly polarized, whereas the dipole, of course, is uh, linear. The size and weight specifications for each are here. One thing to keep in mind is that you can usually get different lengths of antenna cable for the circularly polarized antenna. The axial ratio for these two are identified. Uh, the Lollipop V2 is less than or equal to 1.4, whereas the luminaire axis is approximately equal to 1, which is almost perfectly circularly polarized. I contacted Actuna, and they said that they did not measure the axial ratio for their gem antenna. The gain and standing wave ratio parameters are listed here. The connector I chose to use for all four just to keep it consistent was the MMCX connector because I prefer those connectors as opposed to the UFL connectors and of course the cost is always something to consider. The Foxtrot Lollipop V2 comes uh, for $19.90 for two which is about $10 a piece which is on par with the Actuna Gem whereas the Luminar Axie is somewhat more expensive. The linear dipole, of course, is only 3 to $4. One of the reasons that you may want to consider using a circularly polarized antenna as opposed to a linear dipole antenna is because you'll get better video reception when flying near or around objects than when using the linear dipole antenna. So we should see that bear out in the upcoming flight videos. The manufacturer's gain plots for both the Foxeer Lollipop V2 and Lum Luminar Axi are here if you're interested in those. As I mentioned earlier, when contacting Actuna, they did not do the testing uh, which would have been necessary to generate the gain plot for the gem antenna. So that is the reason that it is not shown here. Here's how we went about uh, testing these antenna with four different flights. We tried to keep as many things as constant as possible with the only variable being the antenna itself. So with that in mind, we used the same quadcopter, which was our Flexar CSN X 3-inch version. Because it's the same quad, we didn't change out the video transmitter. We used the same video transmitter, which in our case was the AKK Oscars backpack or the OBVTX, which we had set on the same power for each of the antenna and flights. And that power we used was 25 milliwatts. And the reason we chose 25 milliwatts as opposed to 200 milliwatts, which is the other setting for the OBVTX, is we wanted to make this comparison as difficult as possible for the antenna. So with 25 milliwatts in the flight path we chose, we figured that we were really going to be uh, testing these antenna out. We used the same frequency band and channel for all four antenna and flights. We used the same flight pattern and we identified that with yellow cones and our flags. We chose to fly slow, as slow as possible, so that you could get some sort of uh, comparison between the different antenna as opposed to it going by so quickly. It was difficult to do, but we did it as slowly as possible. We also chose to fly low altitude with obstructions between the pilot and the quadcopter, specifically my house. And with that, we went ahead and shut the garage door, which is a metal garage door. So we had a metal obstruction between the quadcopter and the pilot when the quadcopter was flying by the corner of the rear of the house. I kept my same pilot location. I didn't change locations uh, from uh, where I was controlling the quadcopter. All four flights were conducted during the same time of day. Basically, when one flight was done, I disconnected the antenna, I reconnected the next antenna, and I uh, commenced flying. The goggles that were used for all four flights were the Amway Commander V1 goggles, and I used the Amway right-hand circular polarized cloverleaf antenna and the True RC patch antenna. So with these procedures in place, let's go ahead and take a look at the flight videos and see what we can find out from the antenna comparison.
Okay, so what, if anything, can we learn from this antenna comparison? Well, first of all, I think we've clearly demonstrated that if we're going to be doing proximity flying, relatively low altitude, and or through, around, or near obstacles, structures, trees, etc., it's probably a good idea to use a circularly polarized antenna, if at all possible, to mitigate the effects of multipath interference and get a better, clearer FPV video. So then, which of our three circularly polarized antenna worked best? Or did any outperform all the others? I can tell you that I was pleasantly surprised by the performance of the Actuna Gem in our little test flight. But which antenna should I put back onto my quad? Or more importantly for you, which antenna should you put on your micro FPV quad? Tell us what you think. Put your thoughts and remarks on this comparison in the comments section below. There are going to be links to each of these antenna for your convenience in the video description below as well. If you found this video to be at all useful, please consider subscribing to TMAC FPV. We appreciate your time. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying.